Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna to take a look at some amazing visualization features in SketchUp for iPad. So as of this recording, the newest version of SketchUp for iPad just came out, and well, models look like this, which is super cool. Advanced materials, uh, image-based lighting, uh, really amazing things that are make your models look better than ever before, and I'm going to not talk about it. We're going to hop in and look at what it is right now. All right, so here we are in SketchUp for iPad, and I have this model open. You can see, I and mean, right off the bat, it didn't have to do anything. You can actually see how, look at how the colors interact with the light around it. Um, it's in this uh, sort of environment that's kind of a sunrise, sunset kind of thing. So we have this very warm color coming in from the side. And as I move the model, you can actually see the light play across it. I like to zoom in on this. This face right here, this is black, you know, a, a shiny reflective black surface. As I go across here like this, you see how it turns to an orange because it's reflecting the color from that sunrise over here. Very cool. I mean, this is this is doing nothing special at this point, and I got all this already, already happening. So this is happening because of two things. One is the new materials. Second is the environment. So if we look at, uh, let's look at the environment first. We're going to go down here and tap on this new new panels, the environments panel. You can see I have a couple of environments in this model. I can switch between them. If I switch between them, two things happen. One is the actual sky dome around changes. The second is the lighting on the model changes. So you can see that. See how that happens? See how it went from like a, this has got this warm low light to just kind of a everywhere bluish light, and the background changes. Let's uh, let's actually look at what makes this up. So I'm going to go into this one environment and look here. So first thing I have here is the sky dome. This is what's going to be wrapped all the way around my model. So as I spin my model in 3D space, you can see that sky dome goes every direction for everywhere, for everything, for all the all the everys. It goes all the way around. Uh, if you look down here, so we have the name of it. Um, we have some options in here. Do we want to use the environment for reflections? Those are the the colors, the lights that are coming out of the model, those are the reflections. And then do we want to use as the sky dome? If we want to, if we like the light, but we don't like the sky dome, of course, we can just turn it off or vice versa. If I like the sky dome, but don't want to see the reflections on the material, I can turn that off and uh, I have control over that. I also have some options up here. So right now it's showing me, okay, here's what the, the sky dome looks like. If I turn on set sun location, I will get the ability to actually change where that sun is and where it hits the model from. So it's by default, it's here right where that the sun is in the sky dome. But as I move this around, uh, you can actually see it'll change how the, the sun hits the model. So you can see there, see how that changes. It takes just a second to figure out where it is, but then I'll see a flicker in the materials uh, as it changes, depending on how high or low that is, that sort of thing. Uh, the other thing I could do is I come down here I can change the rotation. So I can take the whole sky dome and spin it around my model. Gives you this, if I do it all at once, it gives you this cool, you know, time lapse passing of day thing. But uh, you can change where that sun's going to hit, where that light's going to hit based on where the, the sky dome is around the model. The other thing to change here is my exposure. So the sky dome, how light or dark is the sky dome, and then how light or dark are those reflections. So if I want to, I can just blast it and wash it out or I could drop it all the way down and then, you know, no light means no color at all. So, uh, yeah, so I have con total control over that, which is really nice. And then again, like I said, those, those change based on the, on the sky or the environments you're using. Um, I can download more of those from 3d warehouse too, as part of my subscription. All right, let's, uh, so that's pretty cool. Let's look at some materials. Um, so rather than we're going to go throw a couple new materials on here, I just have this just kind of nothing thing back here. Uh, context building, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and put some new materials on. I'm going to go to my paint bucket. I want to get two materials. I want to get like a uh, maybe, yeah, let's do like wood planks. That sounds kind of interesting. Let's throw wood planks right here. And then let's also grab something shiny. Let's shiny metal. I'm going to grab the shiny metal and I'm going to put that right there. All right. So just to start off with, let's look at let's look at how these interact. So shiny metal is 
the name gave it away, shiny. So as I, as I tip it over like this, I'm seeing a hard reflection of that light coming in. See, it turned orange because it's reflecting that orange light. My wood planks, not so much, right? Because they're not, so I'm getting, they're getting warmer as they turn more into the sun, but they're not getting overwhelmed the way that the metal is. The metal's totally losing the black color as that sun shines on there. It's because they have different settings. So let's go look at what those settings are. <clears throat> All my materials are going to have this, by the way. If I pull up that metal, I can see, if I come down here, the properties, I have the same stuff I had before. It's metal, the size of the material, the opacity. But if I come down a little bit further, I get some options in here. Um, I can turn the colors on and off, so I could have just the material versus the, the actual color that's in there. But I can, more importantly, this is the important stuff, is that metalness and roughness. So down here, I could say, okay, I want, I want this to be dull. I want it to be less reflective. And then that will end up changing how much the sun hits that. Same with roughness. I can say, take this roughness, go back and forth, and actually change how much comes in there. Depending on the materials, I might also have a normal, which will let me change how, how the, the, the bumpiness or of the material. So that's going to apply more to the wood. But I can actually change that. So change how that material interacts with the, the sun, the light that's on there. I want to go grab that wood real quick. Let's go, uh, let's do this. Um, I'll just go grab it. Uh, we're going to go into it. And I can see some stuff like roughness. Uh, the normal, this is what I want to look at a little bit more. Let's go, let's go in here close. Look at this wood. And there we go. Uh, and then with this normal map, I can actually increase and you can see kind of how the lightness and darkness changes how it plays in it because it's, changing how the sun interacts with that bump map of that material. Same with ambient occlusion. I can say I want it to be real dark so that the occluded shadows really add a lot of depth, or I can just kind of make it real light so it looks more, uh, sun, I don't know, sun-baked, bright. But I can change those values and change things like my roughness to make it so that when the sun hits it, when the light hits it, there's more play between the light and the dark, the high and the low, and all that's editable for all materials inside SketchUp. And the cool thing about this is, I mean, it feels like we're playing with rendering values right now, but this is the actual working uh, materials in SketchUp. So everything I'm doing here, uh, you know, I can, I can come in and I can actually interact with any of this stuff too. So I could come push pull a, a face out and those values are represented in that new material that gets pulled out. So all of this is just, it's so cool because it's just, it's just SketchUp, same as it was before. It just, has this new look and feel over top of it. Um, so if I come down here, I do have another material that I put in uh, right here. So let's zoom on in. I just imported this. This was a, a picture of some tile and the tile material. Let's see. I don't actually need tile like that. See it without it. Uh, you can see it's not perfect. It's not beautiful, right? So I didn't crop it very well. So I have these skinny tiles and then these big tiles. And if you look at it in the light, so if I, if I uh, get my light shining on here, it's not, it's not exciting. It's not fun. Uh, let's see if I can exaggerate my, my light a little bit. Um, I don't really have, uh, my sun shining on here is not, put that back. Uh, it just, it's kind of shining out like it, like it's a sticker. It's like a big flat piece, right? So I don't see any bumps or anything like that. It's just kind of almost like laminate of tile instead. Fortunately, I can take this imported texture and I can make it more like the other materials. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to come into my materials. I'm going to go to my library. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And here's my material. If I click on that, I'm going to just bring that up. Uh, you can see if I come down here. I could turn some of these things on, but that's not going to fix everything. I could tell it how shiny I want that sort of thing, but it's not going to give me a normal map. It's not going to fix my my poor cutting in my thin tiles. But if I hit this little, little button right here, generate material, that's going to actually take my image, run it through AI. The AI is going to figure out, well, how should it line up so it's seamless? And then it's also going to look at the color values and figure out what a normal map would look like. So in just a few seconds, I'll go from having this not tiling well, flat, laminate looking texture on here 
to something that's going to look more like real tiles and actually play with the light that comes from the environment. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring it right back up. It is now a tile material, so you can see the tiles there. Uh, you can also see when looking at this when I look at the light, the light reflects on it way better than that flat material before. And you can also see see how the tiles are picking up the shine more than the grout between. So there, there's a little bit of resistance. That's that normal map in there. So if I come down here, I have things like it figured out what a good metalness and roughness is, but it also figured out how should those tiles, how should that grout play against the light based on how light and dark it is. And I can actually play that up or down and actually see not just, look at that, not just the grout between the tiles, but the actual tiles themselves got some bumpiness. So you can actually play with that. And then same thing, because it knows what's high and low, I can actually amplify the darkness between the tiles using my ambient occlusion slider. So pretty amazing, awesome way to bring in simple real world materials and get high quality uh, photo based materials right inside SketchUp just with a click of a button. So there you go. Those are the incredible new visualization options you have inside of SketchUp for iPad. Uh, check it out and don't just take our word for it. Try it out. Get in there, make the best looking models you've ever made on SketchUp for iPad and show us what you can do with it. Thank you.